The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Four things the devil wants for your life. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is always looking for ways to make us deviate from our walk of faith. His desire is to turn people from God to himself. What exactly does the devil want in our lives? One, the devil wants us to doubt God. The devil wants to cast a shadow of doubt over our faith and lead us astray from the path that God has set for us. As the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8-9, through 9, we must be on guard and protect our minds from the devil's lies and deceit. The devil tries to lead us away from God's commands and into the temptation to sin. He uses the same tactics that he used on Eve in the Garden of Eden. He questioned God's commands and tempted Eve to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. In the same way, the devil tries to question the truth of God's teaching to tempt us to sin. He wants us to believe that God's commands are too hard to follow and that we should follow our own desires instead. But we must remember that God's commands are for our own eternal goodness and sin only leads to destruction and death. He also wants us to doubt God's love for us. He wants us to believe that God is distant and uncaring. He wants us to feel alone in this world and think that we must rely only on ourselves. God loves us deeply and sacrificially. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you ever seen the negative PR job that the devil does on God? He makes it out as if God is just some far off deity that is uninterested in you and that he is waiting for the day he will finally judge you. But that's not God. The God of this Bible, the God we serve, is a God who loves and cares. He watches over those who are his. We don't serve a dead God, no. We serve a living God. Moses, Elijah, Enoch, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Job, Elisha, Amos, and all the Old Testament saints served a living God, and they knew this living God, and we need to know we serve Him too. Don't ever doubt God. Don't ever doubt God and His goodness. Don't ever doubt God and His mercy. Don't ever doubt God and His loving mercy and tender kindness. Don't ever doubt God and His faithfulness. Don't ever doubt God and His concern and care for your life. If there is one thing that this life and Satan will attack, that is your faith. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. We can have confidence in his love for us and resist the devil's lies with this truth. Two, the devil wants us to doubt the Bible. The devil has been trying to cast doubt on the truth of the word of God since its inception. He's been using false teachings, false interpretations, and false doctrines to try to lead people away from the truth of God's word. He wants us to believe that the Bible is just a collection of myths that is irrelevant for today. But the truth is that the Bible is the inspired word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. In the generation and age we live in, there is an attack on the Bible. I recently saw a show discuss whether the Bible needs to be modernized to suit today's society. And that right there is what the devil wants. He is the God of this world. And as you can see in the world we live in, we live in a world where sin is no longer sin in people's eyes. We live in a culture that openly celebrates sin, a culture that is becoming more and more accommodating to sin. The Bible is a supernatural book that contains the truth of God's message for humanity. The Bible does not change for us. We change because of the Bible. There is no book on the face of the earth that has changed the lives of men and women like the Holy Bible. What a wonderful thing that happened when God told Moses to write a book. It is a living book that speaks to us today just as it did thousands of years ago. It is the power to change our lives 
and bring us into a deeper relationship with God. The devil has raised false prophets and teachers who are making the Bible sound irrelevant. He is trying to make the Word of God seem like it is powerless and meaningless. But we must resist the devil and protect our minds from his lies and deceit. We must trust in the truth of the Bible and know that it is true and never changes. We should also make a conscious effort to study the Bible and apply its teachings to our lives. Three, the devil wants us to live in fear. The devil wants to control our minds and emotions and prevent us from experiencing the peace and freedom that God has promised us. He knows that fear can prevent us from trusting in God, from standing for the gospel message, and from experiencing the joy and fulfillment that God wants for our lives. He wants us to worry about the future, to fear failure, to fear rejection, to fear the unknown, and to fear harm. The devil wants us to believe that we are not good enough, not strong enough, and not worthy of God's love and grace. But the truth is that God does not want us to live in fear. The Bible has a promise for each day of the year, instructing us not to live in fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. God wants us to live in peace and freedom. The Bible tells us that we do not need to fear anything because God is with us and will protect us. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We can trust in God's goodness and His love for us even when the world around us seems uncertain and scary. One of the best ways to overcome the fear that the devil tries to inflict in our lives is to focus on God's promises. When we read the Bible and meditate on God's promises, we start seeing things from a different perspective. We begin to understand that God is in control and will never leave us or forsake us. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Another way to overcome fear is to spend time in prayer and worship. When we focus on God and His goodness, our fears start to fade away. We begin to experience peace in our hearts and our minds, and we are filled with joy and hope. We are not alone in our struggle against fear. The Bible tells us that we have the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth and love living within us. He gives us strength and courage to face our fears. Four, the devil wants us to be led astray. The devil is constantly working to lead us astray from the truth. He wants us to be confused and misled, to follow the wrong path and to be separated from God. He knows that when we are led astray, we are less effective in spreading the gospel, less likely to experience the fullness of God's love and grace, and less able to resist his evil schemes. The devil uses false teachings and false philosophies to lead us astray. He wants us to believe in things that are not true, to embrace ideas that are opposed to the truth, and to be influenced by false leaders who are not aligned with God's will. We must be alert and guard our hearts against these false teachings and false philosophies. We must study the Bible, seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and be discerning in our beliefs and practices. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Test everything. Hold on to the good. We must not blindly accept everything we hear. We must test it against the truth of the Bible. Another way the devil wants to lead us astray is through sin. He wants us to be enslaved by our passions and desires, to give in to temptation, and to be separated from God. But we must resist the devil. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We must resist the devil and put to death the things that belong to our earthly nature. We must live according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. May God give us wisdom and understanding so that we may not be led astray by the devil's lies. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.